supporting yourself. Uh, the next talk is, let me unlock my phone first, uh, is uh, from uh, Stefano Francello, and it's a P a PBX uh, on a non-specialized distro. So, yeah, give applause. No? Okay. Hi to everyone. I'm Stefano and I'm a NetServer developer. I'm here to talk to you about uh, how and why we package the PBX inside NetServer. NetServer is a multipurpose distribution and uh, the issue that we encountered when packaging it. First of all, the software we choose for, uh, for uh, the PBX was Asterisk and FreePBX. They are both quite old, but they fit very well in the environment that uh, is uh, in, our in our user case. And uh, Asterisk is very flexible, and uh, it fits well in an enterprise environment, starting from uh, small enterprises, uh, uh, to the big carrier and providers. And that's why probably the main, uh, mm, a lot of choice that you do when you build Asterisk is about that. And that's why its main distribution method is the source code. It's hard to find uh, updated packages of Asterisk. FreePBX is the web interface for Asterisk. It's PHP a PHP web interface and uh, it has a MySQL database or a SQLite database in some case but it's not 100% support so we choose to use Maria and uh, when you when you configure FreePBX it stores its configuration into the database and when you apply configuration it writes asterisk configuration file then reload them it's written in PHP, it's modular, it's also very extendable and it's easy to write your own modules. Okay, when we choose to package the PBX, we start taking a look from the sysadmin point of view on why sysadmin should choose to have the PBX on a multipurpose distro instead of having a specialized one. There are a few specialized distro and uh, they, they, the pro of having a specialized distro are that they, of course, are, are easy to install and um, they are cutting edge. They always have the last updates for, from Asterisk and uh, FreePBX modules. They have commercial modules. And uh, this can be very important because uh, also you have paid support. In the case of the Sangoma distro, they give uh, paid support only if you have your distro and uh, because of this, usually are uh, installed in an enterprise environment, usually having paid support available is uh, mandatory. The cons of having a specialized distro is that sometimes they are bleeding edge, you can't always trust the updates and you can't use your server for something else too. Sometimes in an enterprise environment it can be useful to have more application on the same server to reduce the hardware to maintain and to monitor. No, you, you have to, to do manual configuration when you use this kind of distro for everything and maybe your distro has a nice guy with, uh, I don't know, user-friendly interface, but in this case you have to manual configure everything that is not configured inside the FreePBX. But you can't manually configure everything if you want because uh, some FreePBX models write their configuration and mess with your configuration. From a distribution point of view, the reasons why we choose to package PBX is that, first of all, having more user. Having more user is uh, part of this virtuous circle that helps to make a better distro. Second, 
we wanted to provide the PBX for our current user and as enterprise to our customers. And also it's important for us to have the PBX on a multipurpose server for the reason I said before. And uh, it's also easier as enterprise to give support because you, when you have a support team, you have to train the, the team only on uh, another application instead of a uh, whole new system. There are also the reasons that depend mainly on why you are building a, a distribution, but I think that we can summarize that in, uh, there is still a big interest in this kind of application in the enterprise environment. Okay, the, the distro I'm talking about is NetServer. I don't know if you already hear it. Uh, who know NetServer? Who already know NetServer? Okay. NetServer is a CentOS-based distribution, and unlike other uh, CentOS-based distribution, it doesn't rebuild the packages from CentOS, but add a layer over those packages to help the configuration. And uh, this layer of configuration has another layer that is a web guy that helps the, admi the admin to have a user-friendly interface to configure everything. That's an overview of the NetServer architecture, but it's quite complex and I'm not going to talk uh, about it today. If you are interested, there are a lot of documentation on the internet. Okay, let's now see what are the issues that you encounter when you try to package those applications and also the issues when you, what you encounter when you try to package similar applications. Okay, first of all, FreePBX requires HTTPD to run as asterisk user and uh, this is quite simple to solve. Uh, the problem, yes, is that we need to have two instances of HTTPD because we don't want the normal instance of HTTPD to run uh, as a service user. So we create another instance by creating another configuration and uh, creating another uh, systemd or whatever service that use this configuration. The second problem here is the PHP version. We use the upstream CentOS FreePBX ver uh, PHP version, sorry. And uh, in our case, it's CentOS 7 and is 5.4. FreePBX 14 needs 5.6, uh, but we don't want to, insta to install for everyone the 5.6 because it can broker their application. So we installed PHP from SGL and um, since we already use another HTTPD instance, we configure this instance to use a PHP FPM from the newer version of PHP. This has a drawback. That means that the two versions of PHP runs at the same time in the system. This has the drawback that is uh, when you want to run uh, a shell command that uh, use the newer version uh, of PHP, maybe for, uh, for using the FreePBX console, you need to load before the environment. But there is also an advantage that is that is very easy for us to migrate uh, to another version of PHP when it's required. It will be very easy for us to migrate to PHP 7 because only FreePBX in the system will use uh, this version of PHP. Okay, another issue that we encountered is that it's not easy to find up, updated package for uh, asterisk, FreePBX, and their dependencies. So when you start to build a new package, you can't find, uh, it's not easy for you to find uh, other packages uh, to, to copy from. We were uh, lucky here because we can take uh, Sangoma Source RPM. It's, uh, it's a very good starting point because they are very up to date. It's not very easy to take them because the repositories aren't browsable. But uh, if you want to start now to do this, uh, you will 
probably take a look to our GitHub where we have all our source RPM and uh, we already took the best that we can from other, uh, from other packages. Okay, that's the worst part. FreePBX, like many other applications, use uh, an installation script for um, putting file around, change permission, and uh, configure database, start and stop service. And uh, this is very bad because uh, you, you can't use the, a normal RPM to put file around and to check permissions. The solution, we don't have a solution here because uh, is a re mm, you have two options. The option one is to take uh, the installation script and use it inside your uh, package, but it's ugly because you are using an installation script that fails, uh, you don't have uh, GPG check and uh, integrity check and everything. The other option is to um, let the RPM do the right thing and put file in the right places, but we choose the one because the second was too time consuming and it took, uh, it took us uh, too far from the vanilla FreePBX and would be uh, hard to keep peace with update. Basically, it could mean to fork and we didn't want to. Okay, another issue is how to take care of backup. NetServer has its own backup and um, FreePBX also has uh, backup uh, modules but we didn't want to use it because uh, we don't want to configure another backup on the model when we have already configured the system-wide one. So we take the, all the databases and uh, when, we want to uh, when we want to restore it, we just install FreePBX as a new installation, then throw away its database and install the backup one. Okay, another issue is that Asterisk has, uh, two, has a few kernel modules that uh, are used for uh, timing, and uh, for uh, internal hardware. And uh, when you use those models, if there is a kernel update that doesn't depend on you, but in our case, uh, we use upstream kernel, so we can't, can know when a kernel will be updated. Uh, sus substantially, the update is broken if you don't rebuild the kernel models. The solution here we adopted was to use weak updates, that is a nice feature of CentOS that allow you to in, install the kernel modules in another kernel with the same major version. It's not the same solution that uh, FreePBX used in uh, their distro because they uh, build the kernel too. If you are building the kernel or if you use, I don't know, maybe uh, some Jenkins, you probably would like to build the kernel modules every time. Okay, um, FreePBX has the capability, a model to configure the WebRTC extension, but they are still also quite difficult to use. So we added the uh, Janus gateway, that is a WebRTC to SIP gateway is a very cool software. And if you are interested, there is a talk about it uh, tomorrow in the real time track and uh, that's all if you want to talk about NetServer there is uh, um, a development room in this building at 16 p.m. and if you want to contact me for uh, talking about PBX or whatever just use my contact I will be very glad to hear from you thank you thank you Thank you, Stefano. Um, does anyone have any question for him? We still have one more minute left. Question? Well, I guess just uh, one comment. Um, mostly, Daddy, uh, it uh, still breaks on every major uh, release of CentOS, on every uh, point release. But you mostly don't need it. If for timing, you, you really don't need it on recent asterisk. And 
unless you use meet me instead of conference okay uh, yes you're right that is not mandatory for uh, timing you uh, also have other option in my experience uh, the they don't always work well when you need a very strict timing like for fax so um yeah i think that's it um a round of applause and thank you